It's not about motivation. Winners need discipline. Wake up and win today. Discipline comes from within. Boxing King Media in association with the Riyadh season. Delighted to be joined by Mick Francis uh, from Tasman Fighters. We're out here in Riyadh. Uh, the music's blazing. It's, it's not as warm as it looks out here, uh, does it? No, it's actually quite cold. Uh, through the daytime, it's not too bad. Nighttime, it is absolutely freezing. Yeah, I've got a lot of people thinking that, you know, everyone's basking in the sun here, but it's not. It's actually, uh, you need a hoodie. Um, yeah, yeah, here with Justice Hooney. Uh, interesting fight with Kevin Lerana. It's a fight that nobody really saw coming, uh, and it took a while to be announced, um, uh, Mick. So I've got to ask you initially, why did it take so long for that fight to be announced, like right up the wire? Yeah, look, look you know, after, uh, after Mexico, uh, we're looking for a a fight for justice that uh, made sense. There was two fights uh, put to us and Kevin is obviously our, our first choice and I'm not sure whether uh, Kevin and the team was that keen on taking uh, the fight against justice uh, previously but um, it took a bit of convincing but you know like why wouldn't you want to fight you know one of the better young up and coming fighters in the world on such a stage and you know, Kevin's coming towards the back end of his career and, um, you know, I think his only real option to be on this card was to fight Justice or not be on the card and, um, you know, hats off to him. I'm, I'm glad he took the took the fight, but uh, it's going to be a cracking fight. You know, like, you've got, uh, you know, Kevin's got plenty of experience. I think he's 32-2, and two, his record, and he's been around for a while and, uh, you know, he's... He's been training really well. I've had a chat to him uh, today and uh, he's looking amazing. So it's going to be a great fight. I'm looking forward to it. I'm surprised you said that you think Kevin's at towards the end of his career because when, he, when you dissect his record, uh, he's had two losses. Obviously, one was a very close fight against Daniel Dubois, one early in his career. He's 31 and I met him for the first time today. I was surprised how much of a big man he is, like really short, stocky guy. Um, so, and obviously, Daniel Dubois found out how much of a tough opponent he was and obviously experience wise he's got a lot more than justice so just curious on your part what makes you guys so confident that this is the right fight uh, in his ninth fight for justice well um i think it's a perfect fight you know like he's not a huge guy um you know justice is obviously that they're going to be the bigger guy in the ring like kevin's sort of stuck between cruiserweight and heavyweight he was talking about fighting at bridgeweight but at the moment bridgeweight He's pretty well much just taking off, and there's not a lot of money in Bridgeweight at the moment. Uh, so, you know, it's the perfect opponent for Justice because he's, he is, I think he's 15 in the world on box rec, uh, Kevin is. So, it's going to really put Justice's, uh, you know, his career on the right foot if he, if he can come and make a statement on this particular card against such a, an experienced fighter on, on, you know, on such an amazing card. So, you know, for us, it's 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 a risk worth taking, and um, and when I put the fight to Justice, he was excited about the fight, and and being a southpaw, uh, I think Justice fights better against the southpaws than orthodox. So, I think it's a perfect opponent for Justice. You know, especially, you know, he's only had the one fight in the last two years, Justice, and with with that in the back of our mind, and it was a pretty good fight. I, I thought he he went really well against uh, Tabidi last time considering he was out of the ring for such a long time. So, you know, a bit of a layoff. He's had one fight in two years. You don't want to go into, the, you know, with the big guys straight up, but I think it's the perfect fight for Justice. Obviously, as a, as a pro so far, you know, not, a lot of British fans who may not have come across Justice, it's worth telling them that Justice on his debut, obviously he was a, he was a top amateur on his debut for the for the Australian heavyweight title. He obviously won that, and on paper, if you look through his record, you guys are moving him quick. Uh, Kevin Lerana obviously is a big big step up from uh, you know the eight fights that he's had. Um, so you guys are clearly confident in him, and you know where do you kind of see him fitting into this like a uh, mix of heavyweights in the world right now? Because if he beats Kevin Lerana, he's like literally top 15, top 20. Absolutely. Look, you know, Justice since day one, like as you said, he he did t debut uh, in Brisbane against the uh, the reigning Australian champion, and you know a lot of people said it was crazy, like going to a, a not only with an experienced fighter as Django, but also going straight into a ten round fight. And but you know, Justice has had a had, you know he's got a great amateur career, and uh, it's all about breaking records for the for the Hoonies. And you know, obviously being 
uh, have, having the opportunity to fight for an Australian title is on debut. It's very special. No one else has done it before. Uh, it was hard to get it across the line, but obviously because of Justice's pedigree and, and his background, we, we seem to get that across the line. And, and he won that you know, it was the seventh round. He stopped Django. So it was, it was pretty amazing. But if you have a look at Justice's career from, from that particular fight till now, like, you know, he, haven't, he hasn't taken any shortcuts. He, you know, every, everyone that he's, he's fought is, you know, of world, world caliber. Uh, I think, you know, maybe there might be one, one fight in there that was during COVID. It was just hard to, to, you know, to get him fights. But, you know, outside of that one particular fight, you know, he stepped up and he's, and every time he steps up, he rises to the occasion. And, you know, like Andrew Tabidi, for instance, like Justice has been out of the ring for such a long time. and. He did have an injury. Uh, he was supposed to fight Andrew uh, a couple of months before that, and he and he rolled his ankle in his last sparring session. And you know that was that was tough. It was a bit you know it was a bit of pill to swallow for Justice. But you know the way he handled himself and um, went to Cancun and he won every single round. And no doubt, that was probably the seventh round was close, but you know, he won every single round of that fight. And you know for someone that's been out of the ring for so long and and had that sort of setback only months prior. It was amazing. So, like, Justice is an amazing talent. Uh, I've been keeping my close eye on, on him over the last couple of weeks, and, mate, he's sparring. He's back to his best. So, you know, my prediction is he's going to stop Kevin Lorena early. So, I can't wait. That's a big statement there. And obviously, I don't really want to ask Justice this question. Obviously, you've kind of gone through his credentials there. But if he does do what you're saying, he puts himself in the mix of going into like these mega fights in Saudi that they're putting on. So he could like say, for example, fight Ajit Kabayel, Daniel Dubois. Are you, is he ready for them type of fights? Would you chuck him in with the, like say Daniel Dubois next? Absolutely. Well, Daniel Dubois was actually the guy after the uh, Jai. We, we come out here for for Jai against uh, against Zorro, and uh, Daniel Dubois was on that card. And um, as soon as that fight was over, I got a message from Justice's dad saying we want Dubois next. So I actually put that to Eddie. Uh, Eddie, you know, he seemed to be thinking that you know it's probably a bit too early. They won't take that fight, but who knows? Yeah, like we got you five. Mean, you mean Frank Warren? No, I put it to Eddie to speak to Frank. You know, and oh, no. Eddie, 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 might, yeah, might yeah. So Eddie, Eddie said that uh, it's probably a little bit too early, uh, and they probably wouldn't take that fight. However, uh, you know, with this five versus five coming up in June, who knows? Like there could be a possibility there. Like they'd be crazy not to put that fight on. Um, you know, it's a fight that the world is ready for. It's a fight that Justice is ready for. Look, Joe Joyce is another option. Like that, it, that'd be that'd be uh, that'd be a good fight for Justice as well. Like either of those guys, you know, we'll take that with both hands for sure, 100. percent Well, I think it's interesting to see what what happens with Justice and how you guys guide him. Uh, you you just touched on Jaya Pattaya. They obviously also manage the career of Jaya Pattaya. Uh, funnily enough, we were sat in the same hotel where probably the most talked about incident in the last year or in fact this year happened um, Tyson Fury's cut and also uh, this alleged rumour of Jaya Pattaya dropping Tyson Fury in sparring so I just want to get your you know I don't think anyone's spoken to Jaya, Jaya or his team no, so no. I just want to get your opinion on that mix so when did you first hear about Jaya leaving the camp can you tell us about that first yeah look I'll be honest we heard about the rumour going around that you know Jai dropped Tyson before we even left. And the reason that we did leave is because there was just no orthodox sparring. You know, there was Tyson and like Jai wasn't fighting, you know, a, a seven foot giant. Like, you know, Jai is fighting, uh, I think he's six foot one. Um, um, Breedus, I think he's six, six one around that, 183 odd centimetres. You know, we need to find sparring partners for Jai that you know, sort of replicates the opponent that he's going to fight. And yeah, it was great to come over here and have that experience. And, and like, you know, Joel was excited to come over and just, you know, be in the same sort of camp as, as uh, Tyson. But, you know, realistically, Joel has to prepare for his fight as well. And, you know, so there was no one out here. We tried to get some guys out here on short notice. It was, it was tough. We had guys already committed back in Australia. So it just made sense to go back. But as far as the sparring, like, mate, it was just good solid sparring. And, you know, they're both professionals and, you know, anyone to suggest that either guy got dropped is, is madness. And, you know, people can say what they want to say. And 
the thing about it, the more you say it didn't happen, the more people think it happened. So I just put my hand, throw my hands up and good luck to them. But well, it never happened. Well, one of the things make people picked up on was they were saying, well, why is he caught two flights to come to Saudi Arabia to do five or six runs, whatever it was with Tyson Fury, then fly back. So um, the obvious question is, like, was that taken into consideration as to which of the sparring was here or was it a case if he got here and thought, it was, like, who made that mistake, basically? Yeah, look, look, you know, there was apparently going to be some good orthodox sparring here. Uh, those guys never turned up. So it just it didn't make sense. And, and anyone that knows Jai Apatea, like, he does not want to get in that ring unless he's 100% confident of doing his job. And you know, he wants to be able to back up what he, what he lets people know, how he can perform. So he's not going to get in the ring if he's not 100%. So... And time's ticking. Like, if he's going to sit here for another week, it's going to like a week to get home. There's jet lag, recovery. Like, there is a sense of urgency to get home and, and get set. Because, you know, Maris Brutus is a tough fight. No matter what you say, mate, he is the second best cruiserweight in the world. And you know, he's got a point to prove. And he is the only cruiserweight in the world that's called Jai Patara out. He wants that fight. You know, you, you hear these other cruiserweights around the world you know, sort of putting their hand up, but it's all bullshit, mate. They don't want to fight Jai Pataya. They know what's going to come, and they just won't do it. So, you know, he's the only one, Jet. Now, hats off to him, but uh, Brutus is the only cruiserweight in the world that wants to fight Jai Pataya, and, you know, for good reasons. He, he's got a point to prove, and, you know, he felt like, you know, he should have stopped Jai towards the back end of the, the fight because Jai, Jai's jaw and stuff, but he ran out of time, and... Uh, Joy's an animal, you know, like... I've got one other question for you regarding the sparring because, you know, people are going to be intrigued to hear somebody speaking from Jai's team for the first time. Um, my understanding is that story when it came out initially, it came from Australian media. Do you, do you know who put that story out there or did you guys ever kind of correct him or anything? I've got no idea. I've got, look, when we when were coming home or when we got home, I had even media ring up and, and they, you know, I suppose they ask a whole range of questions like, you know, how many rounds did they do? Why did we come home? Well, we came home, like I told you then, that we came home because there was no sparring. How many rounds did we do? Like, regardless of how many rounds and how many times we sparred you know, Tyson, you know, they can come to any conclusion they want to come to. But the facts are that we, we came over, we sparred. It wasn't right for Jai. We, we went home. So as simple as that. You know, there was, you know, we've got a good relationship with the, with the Furies. Uh, Spencer's a, a good friend of ours. Um, like we've, we don't have any issues at all, and you know, they they understood our our position and, and the fact that we had to go home and and prepare Jai properly. So there's no no issues, and you know, the media can they can say whatever they want to say, but we know, you know the facts are facts, and the facts are we just wanted to go home and prepare for Jai, Jai to prepare properly. Simple as that. Well, it's good of you to put that situation to bed because I think that kind of concludes the story. Jai will probably still get asked about it because you know, people will still want to hear his reaction as well. But um, it's good to kind of put that uh, to bed. So just uh, moving on, I know you, you're in charge of a lot of other fighters and there's a lot of stuff going on in Australia. Um, and I know Australia's making a lot of moves in boxing. Do you want to let the fans know as to who else they can keep an eye out for on the Australian side of things uh, and what you've got coming up for Tasman Fighters? Yeah, look, we've got an event coming up uh, on St. Patrick's Day in Brisbane. It'll be live on DAZN, which is exciting as well. Uh, Connor Wallace. Connor Wallace is a proud Irishman. He's a light heavyweight. Uh, he's 12-1. and one. Uh, He's ranked inside uh, four of the, the four major sanctioning bodies. And, um, look, he's... He's a major talent, you know. He, he's had a few setbacks as well with hands and so forth. But you know, he's got two good hands. Uh, he's ready to make a statement in the world. You know, he's got his eye on a couple of fighters in the UK. Uh, I know Willie Hutchinson's one guy that he's that he's really keen on. Uh, so you know, like I suppose after St Patrick's Day, uh, tune in live on the zone. Uh, after St Patrick's Day, I suppose it, it'll be. Uh, you know, looking at opp opportunities to come over to the UK or, or whatever, because there's not a real lot back in Australia. They, look, there's a couple of couple of guys in Australia, light heavyweights, that you know they you know, they they say they want to fight uh, Connor, and but mate, they're hiding behind you know telephone numbers and ridiculous amounts of money. That just doesn't make sense, and those fights will never happen for those reasons. But you know, Connor Wallace is number one in our part of the world, and. Uh, there's no doubt about it, and, and you know we're excited for him and his future. And you know, he's, he's only 27, so he's young, so he's got a lot ahead of him as well. 
So we, we want to bring him, hopefully, you know, him over, maybe here to rehab or to London and, and you know, put on some, some good shows over here. But, yeah, he's, he's an exciting fighter and he's got power and, you know, you have to tune in and, and, and see what he's got. I appreciate you giving us an insight into Australian fighting and Conor Wallace, no pressure. You bigged him up, so hopefully we'll get to see him soon. Uh, thank you for your time, Mick. No worries. Appreciate it for the opportunity for the interview and uh, may keep doing a good job. Top man, thank you very much. Listen, I got a question for you. Where can discipline take you? Discipline points you towards your goals. 